and Julia Sondu, showing you where development is happening. Please come and join us. U.S. woman shares how she left her nice life in the U.S. to start a real estate company in Ghana. Now she has lawyers who guide her returnee clients. That uh, have access to units, townhouses, properties, land. You know, uh, we also have lawyers we work with to make sure any issues of litigation are yeah. cleared before we move forward and proceed with anything um, because that is the best way to go about buying land or any property really. An African-American woman called Jennifer Appiah shared the inspiring story of how she left her glamorous life in America to establish a real estate company in Ghana. She confessed that she was born in Ghana but left for America with her parents when she was a baby but has decided to settle back in Ghana for good. An African-American woman called Jennifer Appiah shared the story of how she left her good life in America to relocate to Ghana. She stated that she worked for a hedge fund company in America and also stayed in a nice apartment in New York but she had to leave it all behind. Jennifer explained that she was born in Ghana but left the country with her parents when she was a baby. She returned in February 2019 for a month and was hooked. Jennifer added that upon arrival in Ghana, she quickly realized that her rent money in New York could be put to good use in buying a house in Ghana so she decided to build a vacation home. The African-American woman explained how she trusted a friend to build a house for her by giving the friend enough money to start the building process. Jennifer narrated how her friend kept sending her pictures of the house's progress while away in America. In October 2019 when she came back to Ghana, she realized that there was a problem with the land document so she lost the investment she made in the property. Jennifer mentioned that there were other projects she embarked on in Ghana that brought her nothing but headaches. Jennifer confessed that the issues she had with her projects in Ghana prompted her to start her own real estate company in the country so that she can help others and prevent them from facing the problems she experienced. I lived in New York for a long time. I actually grew up in upstate of New York but ended up moving to New York City which is just a little two hour drive away and started out doing the whole New York hustle, just trying to make it and then I ended up getting a great opportunity to work for a company. A hedge fund and I was able to sell real estate for them. So for the past seven years I was working in that department selling real estate for this hedge fund and it was absolutely incredible completely changed my whole life and I was able to finally move out of Queens into the big city of Manhattan. I was living right in Midtown the most expensive city. It was ridiculous. It's not unheard of to pay upwards of $5,000 a month for rent and for one bedroom. I was living the whole dream. The American dream. Living in New York I had everything I could think of. Beautiful apartment, beautiful view of the city. It was every girl's dream. You can walk into any store get whatever you want but then 2019, it was just something that was like calling me. I was born in Ghana but we left when I was just a baby. We left when I was just a six month old baby, so I never knew Ghana. I didn't grow up here. We didn't come back and forth to visit or anything. Actually 2014 I came for a short trip for four days to visit a friend and then that was my first time coming back. It was so quick. She had a beautiful home, beautiful place, it was so nice but I was really in transit. I was going to Egypt and I was doing a trip to Rome, so I was like, moving around, let me do a little couple days in Ghana, because I haven't been here. It was very different actually. When I actually came, was when I came for another trip in 2019, in February and stayed for about a month. There were more roads, airport was completely different, it was so nice and I was like wow, Ghana has really changed in just a few years and so, that was the first time I had a chance to start thinking about the building process. And I was like you know, I'm spending a lot of money on rent in New York. Had I saved this money I could have built a really nice house here in Ghana, so let me at least try to have a vacation home. So I wanted to start the process of building and I did. I started a building. There was a friend of mine that I've known for several years. He had a construction company and they said they would be in charge of building and all I had to do was provide the funds and they would take care of it. And along the way they were sending me pictures and videos, so I'm in New York thinking oh my gosh I'm building a house. Else and then I get here October 2019. 
and the process was not really that far. The pictures was real but there was an issue in the land documents that I wasn't aware of before. So that's when I found out the whole process of buying land and litigation and not knowing that in Ghana a piece of land can be sold off to five different people and it's very difficult to make those changes unless you want to be in court for a long time. I had to pull out of that house and then start another project which seemed like a great idea. The headache that came out of that first one was just unreal. I had so many friends back home in New York that were like hey you know we want to go back home. It was during the whole Black Lives Matter movement. There's a lot of injustice in America and people were sick and tired of being sick and tired and they're like we want to go back. Let's go back to Africa. Africa is not what they show on TV in America because when I got here I was like this is better than what we have in America. I was like this is great and then they're like we want to go back home too. What are we doing here in America? So I would get so many questions and I didn't really know how to answer it because my experience was very challenging, so it was very difficult and I was like, you guys just slowly roll, you don't know the process of building. Everybody's excited about building but it's a process and it takes a lot of time. You really have to do your research and know where you want to be. After everything I was like you know what, let me start this company because that's what I was doing back in New York. I know real estate. In New York L we were selling shares you know shares. Little bit different than what they do here and then I realized that the real estate market here is like night and day, nothing like in America. Totally different totally different ball game. You are dealing with a whole different situation. Financing options are very different there's no mortgages like in the US it's very common for people in the US to take out a 30 year mortgage at a very low interest rate but in Ghana it's not like that. It's a cash buy and you're you're after your deposit. If the building is already completed you have about 30 days to come up with the rest of the remaining balance and it was like night and day. I could not believe the amount of people that had access to liquid cash like that in Africa. They cannot call Africans poor they cannot. Whatever they're thinking in America is not true because they pay cash for everything here. If you see someone with a house they paid for it cash. If you see someone with a car, they paid for it cash. There's no financing or long monthly payments here. It's a different ball game and it really opened my eyes and I was really happy to see that. But it does make it so much harder to do to do business and to do very thing. So, it was an interesting world but I was like you know what, where there's a world there's a way. And there's a market that wants to come here. There's a market that wants to invest in Africa and every other place is doing it. Everybody's investing into Africa right now so why not we do it for ourselves. Now, my company works with a bunch of different developers. There are different developers. Lots of different companies that either we sell directly for. But again I'm acquiring the right land and a space to do something like that. It has been quite a challenge for us but work with definitely a bunch of different developers that have access to units, townhouses, properties, lands, also have lawyers to make sure any issues of litigation are cleared before we move forward and proceed with anything because that is the best way to go about buying land or any property. When people want to buy from me, first of all I would ask them for their profiles for me to get an idea of exactly what they're looking for, the location where they want to be what type of unit, if it's an apartment, a townhouse they want to build from scratch, if they want to do anything like that. Recently we had a young woman, a very established woman who come in and she was looking for a condo and she wanted to be in Accra. She said I've had the big houses I've done everything I want to enjoy my life because my children are grown. So we found her a beautiful unit in airport and it just so happened that it was already built, already constructed at a Villaggio actually and she fell in love with it. So we talked with the developer, they negotiate the prices and typically we take them around. Now, I want them to go around the first because I think my biggest mistake when I first got to Ghana was rushing. Once you're here for a while you kind of get a feel of where you want to be, what area you want to live in. Is it closer, if you have children closer to their school? Is it closer to your job or are you just building and buying a house, or something just because it's all that was affordable, but we usually take them around what feels like home. What areas do you want to be in? Do you love the mountains? Do you breathe what, what part of town do you really want to feel? 
So we really take them by the hand and walk them through the process, because people come for so many different reasons and just be and there are some cases where being right in town is not the best avenue for them. So we kind of feel out what they're looking for and of course budget, you know Accra has definitely changed. It's definitely more expensive but they can find something beautiful which is maybe just about 30 minute drive away so once the profile is filled out we then move forward and then get in touch with each developer. This is the end of our program today, see you on Intervlog same time tomorrow. Thanks for watching, please like and subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get new video updates. Thank you for watching Intervlog. Thank you.